This is the William Pinto house that we're looking at here at 275 Orange. We've all, I think, been past this house probably uh, th hundreds, thousands of times. You may not have known that this is actually a living link to some of the earliest Jewish settlers uh, in New Haven. There were probably uh, Jews in New Haven before the Pinto brothers, but the Pintos are the first Jewish settlers that we really know anything about. Uh, the brothers uh, Jacob and Solomon Pinto, who were of Sephardic descent, um, they were from, from Western Europe. I think they were from Amsterdam. We don't know exactly. They also spent time in some of the Dutch possessions in the, in the Caribbean. We know they were Sephardic Jews. They arrived in New Haven around 1758. Uh, and they became very prominent merchants and citizens who were acquainted with leading New Haveners of the day, people like Roger Sherman, Noah Webster, Eli Whitney, Yale President, uh, Ezra Stiles, and it's believed that at some point uh, after arriving in New Haven, they, they stopped practicing Judaism. According to Stiles, they had renounced Judaism. So perhaps that was the price of uh, being accepted in colonial era society. We don't really know, but they, gra they clearly grappled with uh, some of the same challenges of assimilation uh, and ambivalence about Judaism that Americans of Jewish heritage have always grappled with throughout history. So as far as I'm concerned as a historian, that is a reason to include them on this tour, not to exclude them. So when some people say, well, they renounced Judaism, why are you putting them on your tour? Well, what's, what's more Jewish in a way than somebody <laughs> who says, hey, I don't want to be a Jew anymore. Um, so it's not, my, as a historian, it's not my position, it's not my role to arbitrate the age-old debate of who is a Jew. So uh, Jacob Pinto's house uh, was nearby here at the corner of Grandin State. It was said to have been one of the grandest uh, houses in New Haven. It was one of the first brick houses in New Haven. He, Jacob had three sons, okay, Solomon, Abraham, and William. All of them served in the Revolutionary War. I'm not sure that there's any other case that, that I can find of three brothers of Jewish heritage all serving in the Revolutionary War at the, at the same time. Abraham Pinto uh, enlisted in 1775 in the 10th Company of the Connecticut 7th Regiment. He was wounded defending New Haven when the British came here and bur sacked and burned New Haven uh, in July 1779. Uh, his his brother uh, Solomon graduated from Yale in 1777. He immediately joined the Patriot Army, George Washington's army. He was in the expedition that captured Fort Slongo, Long Island, from the Redcoats, and he served uh, until the end of the Revolution, became a member of the Society of the Cincinnati, corresponded with George Washington, the whole, the whole deal. Our guy, William Pinto, who lived in this house, after the war. He also graduated from Yale and immediately joined the Patriot Army. As an officer's secretary, he became known for his penmanship. He had very nice penmanship. That was an important skill. He made copies of the Declaration of Independence for Connecticut's war governor, Jonathan Trumbull. You can see those copies at the Connecticut State Library in Hartford. Copies that were made by William Pinto for the governor. Later, William was stationed in New London, Connecticut, and when Benedict Arnold landed there in 1781 to burn that city, uh, William was sent, sent there, sent to deliver the news to Governor Trumbull at his war office in Lebanon, Connecticut. So keep in mind that William knew Benedict Arnold personally. He had known Benedict Arnold personally because before the war, Arnold had lived a few blocks from here on Water Street in New Haven. So this guy Arnold is, he's a real jerk, right? He, this, this is, these are his own communities in New Haven and other places in Connecticut that he, he's betrayed and now he's sacking and burning them with the, the British Army. So, um, so William was kind of like the Paul Revere. He had to race from New London up to Lebanon to notify the, the Governor Trump of what happened there. So after the war, William became a merchant uh, in the West Indies shipping trade. Some people say he may have been involved in the slave trade. Um, there's not really, I think, solid evidence of that. We don't, we don't really know. But he did die in New Orleans in 1847. And he's buried there. So this, this house, this very nice uh, front gable, federal style house, beautiful Palladian window, window there, was built in 1810 with traditional uh, New England post, post and beam construction. Uh, it was actually first built for a merchant named John Cook, whose much grander house 
uh, built a few years later, is just around the corner here on Elm Street, on the site of Theophilus Eaton's house, the founder of New Haven uh, Colony. Oh, no. So Cook had only, only lived here for a few years before getting richer and building a bigger house around the corner. And it was bought, this house was bought by William Pindo. Another interesting connection here is that Eli Whitney, the Eli Whitney is believed to have died here in 1825 while staying with William Pinto as Whitney was waiting for construction on his house to be completed. So he was building a house, I think right here uh, on, on Orange Street, waiting for that to be completed. He was staying at his friend William Pinto's when he died in 1825. For years this was, this was owned by a, a Jewish lawyer, which is fitting. Um, recently a developer from uh, Westchester County has proposed a 70-unit, seven-story apartment building on this site. And the original iteration uh, of this plan uh, would have called for, required the demolition of this very historic house. So our organization, Ethnic Heritage Center, um, complained about this. A city historian, Judy Schiff, who's on uh, the, one of the founders of Jewish Historical Society, complained. We got the developer to agree to move the house as part of this development. So they're going to move this house about 50 feet to the north along Orange Street, uh, which will ruin the foundation. It's a historic foundation, but at least the building will be preserved.